mark one week of the passing of our own man, Kwamla Apeke Jumo. And, uh, of course, uh, his, uh, his death has been linked to cardiac arrest. But just in 2012, he was invited by uh, Legacy and Legacy, um, who are headed by Albert and Comfort Okan, to give um, a speech because he was their personality of the year on their springboard roadshow. He wasn't in a position to make it. He... However, Doe recorded a message for the event. We play back that very message for the Springboard Roadshow. And the spirit of life. Choosing the speaker has been on our minds for the past five years. But it will always have to be at the right time because there is a right time for everything. Do it too early. Or do it too late and you won't get the desired result over the years this personality who will be honoring later in the program as the springboard personality of the year has stood out in his fields of endeavor and come across as a person who is a leader and an example for many younger and older than him strong character, a man of great discipline and application, and he's excelled in various fields in the media. And I recall when he was named the journalist of the year in this country, and the debate about dynamic, dynamism of career, and the fact that some could not relate to the fact that somebody who didn't do a particular course could excel in a particular field. But he was representing the global thinking that makes an engineer a management consultant and makes a history student a social media activist or makes a political science student an economist and makes a French student a director of marketing. Today, there is no debate about who he has come to represent or who he is and what he represents. He is a leader in the field, not just in the country or in the continent, but also on the global stage. He's the face of the British Broadcasting Company because he's the one that everyone recognizes across Africa whenever he steps up to present a program, whether it is the BBC Focus on Africa or the World News. Ladies and gentlemen, in a conference with a the theme going global, a speaker doesn't have to be physically present to speak. By virtue of technology, which is one of the fastest ways to go global, we will be joined in a minute by Komla Dumont of the BBC. I ask only one thing. The same applause you would have given Komla if he was here, because he's watching live from London, Give him that same applause as he will give every keynote speaker. So, ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker for today, Komla Dumo. Put your hands together for him. Hello, everyone. Hello, Comfort. Hello, Albert. Hello, Kofi Dua. Um, I'm Komla Dumont. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you. I must first start by apologizing by not being physically present there with you. Uh, unfortunately, this is a very busy time for us at uh, BBC World News, and my obligations to the organization are such that I cannot travel at the moment, but I'm definitely there with you in spirit. I need to start off by saying a big thank you to the organizing team and to all of you who've attended. Attending events like this is incredibly important, especially if you are ambitious and you have plans for yourself. You need to associate with like minds and to do things that help you to achieve your goals. And I believe attending this is one of them. Dumois, as you know, I'm a presenter with BBC World News Television. Uh, at the BBC, I present two programs. Uh, in the mornings, I present the European World News Program, which is mainly business and global news. But a program that I'm incredibly proud of is BBC Focus on Africa. It's a program that we started a few months ago here on BBC World News. I'm the anchor of that program as well. And I'm very passionate about that for, for two main reasons. One, because I'm passionate about telling stories, which is what the 
the BBC does, covering compelling and powerful events around the world. And the second reason is I'm an African. And uh, that kind of draws me a bit closer to the story, a better understanding of what's happening around the continent, and a real passion to tell the story of a new and emerging African powerhouse. And so for those reasons, I'm very proud of Focus on Africa, but across the board, I play a number of roles at the BBC as a main news presenter and as somebody who to a large extent is, uh, you know, very much represents what the BBC stands for, quality journalism, balanced editorial work, and having the ability to reach out to corners of the world and tell the rest of the world what is happening, providing a platform for people to engage, to learn, to experience, and just being part of that is something that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, I started out wishing I could become a doctor, and I spent many years studying science. I went to medical school, and those who don't know the story, well, the sad part of it is by my fourth year in medical school, I'd failed the final exams, and I was withdrawn from the program. I wanted to be a doctor for perhaps two reasons. One, because I have passion. I truly believe in doing something meaningful while I am on this earth. And the second reason is... I like people. Um, I like to be around people. I like to learn something new. And bringing those two together, I thought a course in medicine would be best for me. However, I discovered after several years that there was one element that was missing at the time. Because I started medical school when I was very young. I was 16 when I started medical school. I did not have the discipline for the long hours of work that was required to study medicine. I was young. I was distracted, and I failed, and I paid the price. It would take me several years to get back on my feet, but within those years, I learned so many things about myself, around, about my, my family, about the world around me, and those are things that I've applied now being a broadcaster and in that long journey to where I am today. So one thing you should remember, because I think we're all here to be motivated, one thing you should remember is that failure is never the end unless you allowed it. If, like me, you failed in some pursuits, I failed in medical school, and you give up, it is the biggest mistake you will ever make. Well, you know, people sometimes look at an individual who's achieved something and they only look at what they have achieved. They don't look at the journey. My journey is a fairly interesting one. As I mentioned earlier on, I started out in medical school. That didn't go too well. Um, I was living in Nigeria. My parents were academics. Uh, they were teaching in that country at the time. We returned to Ghana. I had no degree. I had no friends. I knew nobody. And I was, it was a pretty depressing time. However, I still had a lot of desire and ambition in my heart to do something. I ended up at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, um, and I was in a department called Schools Broadcast. My main role was uh, reading scripts for a program called Everyday English. Um, it was nice, it was interesting, but it did not satisfy my desires. So after national service, I went to the management of GBC and asked them if I could become a news presenter, and I was roundly told no. Therein lies a lesson. In life, whatever you want to achieve, there are people who are going to tell you no. You have two options, to accept it and be discouraged, or to accept that they have said no and to keep moving in the direction that you want to go. It would take me another two years before I ever got any meaningful job in media, and that job was at Joy FM. I started out at Joy FM not as the host of a high-profile morning show, but as the presenter of something called the Mobitel Traffic Watch. I would sit at the back of a motor scooter with a mobile phone and report the traffic news. There weren't many people who were willing to do work like that because it's not the most glamorous thing. It is not the thing that you show off with. Many people want the glory, but they don't want to put in the hard work. I hope that's not you. I started out reporting traffic. I was given the opportunity to start presenting weekend programs, and eventually I made it to the high-profile, top-rated morning show. And some would say, ah, and the rest is history, but no, a lot of hard work would follow. 
I'm inspired, first of all, by my parents, uh, my late mother, who was an incredibly hardworking woman. She was ill for the last few decades of her life, but she still managed to raise three wonderful children and be a wonderful wife to my father, an incredibly bright woman who kept pushing and kept insisting and demanding the best from all of us, even when she was going through immense pain and suffering. I'm also inspired by my father. I haven't met a man who I respect more on this planet. Um, I've often said that if I was to live a thousand lives or to be reincarnated a thousand times, I would still want the same parents that I have today. Great man and a great woman who are hardworking, humble, spiritual, and very inspiring. My other source of inspiration is within myself. For those of you who are spiritual, God or Jesus Christ or, uh, you know, uh, Islam, if you're a follower of Islam, you do find a source of inspiration in what you believe. But you also need to find inspiration within yourself. And for those of you who are familiar with the Bible, there was a time when King David was distressed. He had lost all that he had achieved. But there is a verse in the Bible that says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. David didn't go looking for somebody's shoulder to cry on. David encouraged himself in the Lord. So I often look to myself for inspiration. Am I satisfied with the work that I've done? Do I think I could have done it better? Are there still things to do? I look to myself and find inspiration and go for it. Okay, I'll start here. If I could put it in a sentence. Before you go global, you need to start local. Be small, but think big. You see, a lot of people want to be the big face on screen, or they want to be the great voice on radio, but they don't want to start small. I started small. It did not matter to me whether anybody knew my name. I continued to work to put in the kind of discipline that is required to achieve great things. Anybody who has achieved great things started small. Bill Gates, Michael Dell, people who created the most powerful computing systems in the world. They started their work in a garage. They started small, but they became big. Prince Kofi Amwabeng, who may just be there in the audience with you. Prince, if you're there, um, I, I wish I could be with you, but you're somebody who inspires me as well. Because I remember the days when you started your business in Makola, small. But now, Prince Kofi Amwabeng is one of the biggest industrialists and businessmen in the country. Start small, but think big and achieve great things. The next point I want to make is about standards. What standards do you set for yourself? I often hear people say something like, uh, oh, by Ghanaian standards, this is good, or oh, by African standards, this is good. Look, there's only one standard, and that is a global standard. If you set the bar low for yourself, you will achieve things that are low. If you set the bar high, you will achieve great things. So set a standard for yourself that reflects on the things you want to achieve. Do not set low standards. Aim high and cross that bar. My third point, set targets to measure your own progress. You cannot decide that you are going to become the next great thing, whether it's in science or in medicine or in sport or in broadcasting, if you do not have a target, a plan, and a time frame. If you're just plodding along thinking, oh, eventually I'll get there, you will not get there. You won't even know if you have. You need to set a clear time frame. By this date, I need to have done this. By that date, I need to have done that. If you do not set those very clear and defined time frames within which you intend to achieve your goals, you will find that you do not achieve them at all. Let me return to our point about being local, but thinking global. The transition from local to global does not mean you have to physically leave your locality. Yes, I work in Britain, I work around the world, but when you're forging your greatness, you forge it where you come from. All the elements of what you see or you think that I've achieved were forged at home. 
So start building your standards. Start building the quality of whatever you want to do. Start achieving those goals right where you are. So that when you do get on a global platform, the cake has already been baked. You're already ready to take on the world. Well, um, I hope it holds good things, but I'm realistic about life, and I've been through uh, enough difficulties to know that there are going to be difficult times, and there are also going to be wonderful times. Um, I'm always optimistic about the future, because I know that no matter how hard it gets, the sun always shines through. Um, I enjoy what I do. I work with an incredible organization. I have a very important and significant role, and I'm grateful for that. Um, what does the future hold? Well, I'll see where it takes me. But whatever happens, I'll be prepared for it, and I'll accept the challenge the same way they tell people to take the bull by the horns. I'll be ready for it, and I certainly hope that you are there to share in the journey. And the final point I want to make about things that compel me to move forward is about consistency. You know, people wake up in the mornings, and around the world, they see me reading the news. Millions of people see what I do for a living. But it wasn't always that way. The people who work at this organization, the BBC, the managers of the BBC, gave me an opportunity. But I was ready and prepared for that opportunity when it came. And that's why it's important to be consistent, because there are days on which nobody may notice what you are doing. Nobody may give you praise. Nobody may acknowledge that you've done something great. And you may think to yourself, well, since nobody noticed it, there's no reason to give a hundred percent or maybe I can get away with 60 percent the day you decide your performance will be 40 percent is the day that the person who could have changed your life will actually see your work and say this guy operates at 40 percent you must be consistent operate at a hundred or a hundred and fifty percent every single time you are given the opportunity because it'll only be on one day that somebody will see your work and that individual may have the power to change your life and your circumstances. And they will be inspired by what you did. So always give 100%, no matter what is happening around you. All of us have personal problems. All of us have issues that we're dealing with. All of us have to deal with the day-to-day -day things of being a human being. You have bills to pay. You have children to take care of. You have illness or whatever it may be. But you must be consistent when it comes to your dream. And I'll end with this story about somebody who I think really inspires me. I'm sure all of you know who Michael Jordan is. Michael Jordan, the basketball player. I'm inspired by him because of one particular story. Game five of the 1998 NBA Finals. This game would give the Chicago Bulls, the team that he played for, the title. Before the game, Michael Jordan was incredibly ill. He had the flu, he was in bed, he was receiving drips, and he could barely stand on his own two feet. And everyone thought, well, he can't make it. He's unwell. And look, if he had decided not to play, I think the world would have forgiven him because he was a great player anyway. But he got onto the court in his illness and broke all the scoring records previously for any other NBA game. In illness and in pain, he performed at 150%. There's not another inspiring story I can tell you. No matter what is happening around you, what matters is what you think about yourself and how you perform under pressure. Be inspired, work hard, set high standards, and take your dream from local to global. I wish you the best of luck. Remember to keep yourself healthy and safe work hard, and I hope you achieve great things. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you all. Wow. Self-important.